Hey, what's going on everybody? Gus here. How are you guys doing today? So, I've been thinking about going full wireless on my setup for a while now. I mean, for keyboards and mice, stay away from my headphone cables. But in that quest, I've been looking for something in a TKL profile or smaller, but that would keep that tactile experience, the tactile feedback while typing, and with a good wireless connection. Now, a hugely successful Kickstarter campaign later enters the Keychron K6. This little board has a lot of good going for it, but obviously not all are flowers. So let's discuss right after this. Remember that time when you were downloading that video and then when you went to play it? Well, say goodbye to all those issues and pretty much every other problem you could have with videos, audio or images because now Unique Converter is the one tool that's gonna solve them all. It's got everything you might need to convert, edit, compress and burn videos, convert DVD formats, transfer files, fix video metadata, make GIFs, convert anything into VR and much more. The whole interface is super user friendly and pretty dang easy to use as well. And if you do hit a wall, there are a bunch of tips, tricks and tutorials for you to learn how to use every single feature of UniConverter, as well as all the same awesome support features that every Wondershare product has. It's obviously fully compatible with macOS and Windows in both a full version, and by the way, the lifetime plan is definitely the best value deal, and a free download, as well as an online free version that can do almost everything that the desktop apps can do. So in a pinch, it can be a lifesaver. So check the links in the description to learn a bit more and start your free trial today. Now, starting at $69, the K6 has three main versions with a couple of switch options and uh, stuff in between. The base version has white illumination, a full plastic construction, and comes with Gateron mechanical switches, either blue, red, or brown. For $10 extra, you can opt between LK optical switches or a PCB with support for hot swap that also comes with Gateron switches. Now, upgrading lighting to full RGB adds another 10 bucks to whatever option you've chosen before. And the later tier is another 10 bucks up top to add an aluminum bezel to the frame. It doesn't fully swap the frame for an aluminum one, just adds a bezel to the plastic one. Personally, I would totally forget the RGB and the aluminum bezel and go straight for the hot swap PCB with Gateron switches because that is where it's at. It's the best deal for all the K6 options and you'll see why in just a moment. Now, this is a proper mechanical keyboard with great feeling mechanical switches. In my case, it's Gateron Browns to keep that tactility, but without being in itself a clicky switch. So dropping the noise floor a little bit. I've also tried the K6 with O-rings to see if it would dampen a little bit of the bottoming out sound because this is stock out of the box, quite a bit loud, but I don't really like the feel, the mushy feeling that the O-rings leave on the board. There's no case pink and the stock stabilizers do come pre-lubed, but I would still suggest you guys Band-Aid mod the PCB, clip and re-lube the stabilizers for the best possible results. Now the K6 is a 65% board, which is a first for me. And since I use the arrow keys so much, I honestly don't think I could, you know, feel comfortable with an even smaller keyboard, like 60 or 50%. The function row is merged into the number row up top. And just like with all the configurations and all the lighting options, everything is easily accessible through the function keys right by the side of the arrow cluster. Now, my only suggestion for this layout would have been to actually have a proper dedicated key that does something like a, a normal key up top in the right portion instead of a key dedicated entirely to illumination because that could very well have been a function of another different key. But again, not that much of a big deal and you kind of get used to it. 
Now, remapping keys is possible and you can use either Carabiner on Mac or Sharp keys on Windows, but neither will actually allow you to remap the illumination controls. Now, speaking of Mac and Windows, yes, this board is compatible with both operating systems as well as Android and iOS. And you can switch between the different operating systems through the toggle on the far left side of the board, which is awesome because it means that no matter what system you're using, you won't lose actual functionality with the keyboard. Now, right alongside that toggle is the USB-C plug and the switch to choose between Bluetooth mode, wired and off. Personally, I would have liked to see this cluster of stuff thrown to the back and more to the right of the board, but not a deal breaker, you just get used to it. As I said, the frame is entirely plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap. It's a pretty sturdy and, you know, robust construction. There's no flex, it's rather lightweight. There's rubber feet on the bottom to help you know, it's not sliding around. And there are two feet on the back that you can kick open for extra angle adjustments. Now the case itself already has a little bit of an angle from the front to the back, but me personally, I'm using the smaller feet on the back kicked open because it basically makes this thing the exact same uh, layout angle thing as my drop control, which is perfect for me like spot on. Now, this is not necessarily a small keyboard, and even though I don't use one, you may want to look at a wrist rest to prevent you from having too much strain on your wrists. And Keychron actually provides one, uh, they have one for sale on their website that's made entirely out of wood, and it is specifically 65% in size, which is not something you find every day. Now, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful, I just don't know if it's like as comfortable as something that would have memory foam or something like that, and it costs around 25 bucks so if you're up for it there's something you can look at now it comes with a long braided angled USB-C cable keycap and switch puller in the case of the hot swap version and an extra set of keycaps for windows as well as some orange accent keys the keycaps are thin ABS plastic and I like the dual gray tone look even if it is the exact opposite of what was in the pictures on both the site and the Kickstarter page and it's a shame because I was actually you know looking forward to that darker color darker look now there's no texture on the keys and being ABS they do pick up on finger oils but much less than I was expecting so that's a plus now the font is beautiful and slim but as a downside it doesn't help with the illumination which is quite weak now the black PCB and plate beneath the keys also don't help spreading that illumination so visibility in darker environments is just all right, like barely, and basically non-existent as soon as you move to more brightly lit spaces. Now, speaking of PCB, both the standard and the hot swap versions only support north facing switches, but the hot swap version has support for five pin switches. So you don't have to mod your custom switches in order to try them on this keyboard, which is awesome. Like thumbs up, extra point. The bottom row though is not standard and the right shift is a smaller unit. So it's probably gonna pose a little bit of a challenge finding replacement keycap sets. So that point has just been removed. Now the Bluetooth connection has worked flawlessly with all the devices I've tested going from Mac to Windows, Android and iOS with no issues in either connectivity, functionality or operation. And I've basically used this thing only in wireless mode since it has this good of a battery life with a 4,000 milliamp hour cell inside. I doubt you guys are going to be using it plugged in most of the time, even while gaming actually. Now I know, granted, uh, Bluetooth connectivity issues and the battery just dying on you in the middle of a competitive session of gaming, that can be a real bummer, but I haven't experienced much of a difference between the wireless and wired modes while gaming more competitive and shooter style uh, titles like Overwatch, so I didn't really feel that much worried. I, I would just continue using it fully all the time in wireless mode just for convenience's sake. Now, even at that top end for $99, the K6 still brings a powerful trifecta of features that is kind of hard to find in the mechanical keyboard space. I get that support for hot swap is a feature that's much more appealing to the enthusiast crowd, people who like to customize their keyboards a little bit more. And speaking directly to that market, there is nothing out there that delivers all the K6 does, at least not without a pretty hefty price premium on top of it. My beloved drop control, for example, is definitely better built with a full aluminum case and much better illumination. And it also has hot swap. Granted, it doesn't support five pin switches. 
but it's not wireless and it costs 200 bucks. Now taking hot swap out of the equation and ignoring the aluminum bezel and the RGB illumination, the K6 is a 69 or $79 keyboard depending on your switch choice. And at that price, its main competition is still coming from boards that cost around a hundred bucks, like the famous N Pro 2, which is 60% wireless and mechanical, but no hot swap there, and gaming offerings like the Corsair K63, which again, mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX switches, it is wireless, but not hot swappable, and both of them are in the $100 mark. I would personally still take the $79 hot swap version of the K6 over those two options, like easily, and actually over most of the other options in the market, but I would still want to see a couple of improvements from Keychron. Like for example, offering a full aluminum case as an option, or thicker PBT keycaps instead of the ABS set this is coming with. And it wouldn't hurt to actually beef up the illumination a little bit. And if that hurts the battery too much, I mean, there's plenty of space in this chassis already to put in a bigger battery, just saying. But these are overall pretty small things to the entire package and definitely will not knock the K6 from getting a recommendation. I am actually really loving this little board and I'm fully considering going for a custom job looping switches, then you have new stabilizers, new OEM keycap sets for, you know, a different look. And I was even thinking about a weight, something to put within the case to give it a little more heft. All those things put together are definitely going to make this K6 almost an entirely different keyboard, but very much my own but it's gonna take a little bit. Now that's been it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. So leave any comments or suggestions down below as usual, if you're feeling like it. And while you're down there, I'd love to know how do you guys feel about features like the hot swap and wireless for mechanical boards like the K6. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later.